Hiro Mitsu, first of all, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Uh, this is your national debut in the U.S. on television, but I understand in Japan you're quite comfortable with being in front of the camera. Can you give us an idea of your celebrity in Japan? As a shamisen player, I've made many appearances on um, television shows, especially music shows. People do stop me on the street and say, oh yeah, you're the guy who plays shamisen. So we got a big celebrity here. My pleasure. <laughs> Um, for many North American audiences, I'm sure they've never seen the instrument that you're holding, the Tsugaru Shamizen. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you first got introduced to the instrument? Because I understand it's traditionally for, for older people in Japan, but you started playing at the age of six. My father's hobby was playing the shamisen, and I was quite taken by the sound of, its, of it as an instrument and, and became interested. What is the history behind the instrument? Uh, it traces his lineage back to China, where it made its way to Japan in the 16th century, settled into Okinawa as an instrument called the Sanshin, and made its way to Japan, and its name is the Shamisen. Now, when you first took it up, though, you moved to Tokyo, and you made the conscious decision not to be classically trained, but to teach yourself. Um, what, what were the benefits to you to go that route? Actually, I had a uh, teacher from age 6 to 15, and then after 15, I, I became self-taught and started participating in rock bands and playing jazz as well. And that was obviously something that you wanted to do, was to fuse traditional sounds with more contemporary sounds. Why was that? Well, actually, the more traditional folk songs that I sing were, back then, their most popular songs. And so I don't see any contradiction between trying to fuse it with a more contemporary sound to make them popular songs now that young people today can appreciate. Did you encounter any resistance, though, at, at the beginning when you, when you were trying to sort of take it to a new level? Yes, there were um, traditionalists who denied that the music I was playing was actually Tsugaru Shamisen. But I believe that musical expression should be free, and I decided to trust my heart and to go with what I felt was exciting and fun. And uh, now some of those traditionalists are, are on my side. And of course, there's no better revenge than success. What did it feel like for you to win all of these competitions in Japan, despite the fact that you had some naysayers? Mm. For me, the awards are really just um, mile markers on a longer road. Um, people can win awards, but that may not necessarily mean that they can thrill audiences live on stage, and that's much more important to me to take the shamisen worldwide. And that you have done. You've done a lot of traveling in South America, North America. I wonder how being introduced to foreign cultures has influenced your music. Being able to jam with musicians from different countries really does open up the shamisen, my own music, and I look forward to jamming with musicians all over the world. And really it does bring home how through music there are no borders, there are no boundaries, and I really look forward to communicating with people around the world through my music. Is there one place in particular that you can remember having a really good moment with some foreign musicians? Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hancock. Yeah. Herbie Hancock in Tokyo, he, he asked me to play with him. Uh, the one thing that was unfortunate is that I looked so young that he kept calling me Shamisen Boy. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you, you stopping by. Uh, my guest today was Hiromitsu Agatsuma, and his latest album is called Eternal Songs. And once again, here he is on Breakfast with the Arts.